we are in a transition time of year in the southeast, typically a quiet, dry time before we get to December, and the southeast begins to see more rain. We will talk a little more about that and see if there have been any changes since our October WRO. Chris and I will get you up to date in the November edition of the Water Resources Outlook. 30-day departure from normal shows much of the southeast below normal for this time of year. This time period is one of our driest of the year, even when you factor in the hurricane season because hurricane season is winding down. We will check that out when we see the climatology in just a little. The areas that have been seen above normal precipitation include South Florida, upstate North and South Carolina, and the western Florida panhandle into Alabama. Drought is starting to creep into the area, and we will show the Drought Monitor 2 in just a little. Part of what we wanted to, I wanted to talk about was the rainfall that's up in the top of the Savannah Basin hasn't been as helpful as we would have liked to fill the reservoirs in the Savannah Basin just because of the timing of that rainfall, and it's been pretty consistent over, over the whole period. So we haven't seen the um, improvement, hopefully, as we get into um, December and January and less competition for the water from the heat and the trees, we might see some improvements in some of those reservoirs in that area. The 90-day departure from normals are similar but include hurricane rainfalls from earlier in the season. Due to dry weather recently in most of the southeast and some of those hardest hit areas, the impacts from the storms are really beginning to fade. Central and South Florida remain above normal, and as mentioned in our last water resources that look, I believe we are looking for they are looking forward to a quiet, dry season. Areas in North Carolina and Virginia remain dry. They just didn't see as much rainfall from the tropical systems moving through the southeast. As stream flows are a lagging indicator of drought in the southeast, and we typically show the 28-day average, it's hard to tell where the drought is beginning to show up from this graphic. The one exception is that area in central North Carolina and Virginia, as they have seen some of the driest weather in the area these last few months. And now on to the drought monitor, which we haven't shown in a while because we really haven't needed to. Well, now we do, and it looks like the graphic is going to become a mainstay in the water resources outlook for the foreseeable future. Most of what we are seeing is abnormal dryness, the yellow, but moderate drought in the more brown colors is starting to expand in North Carolina Peanbog and into Virginia to the north, north into Virginia and into Georgia on the south end. If we don't see some pretty good rainfall between now and the end of the year, this area and severity could grow pretty quickly. Seems that each year we have some pretty heavy rain around the holidays somewhere in the southeast. Let's see if this year is going to be any different. Flood climatology indicates we are in one of the more quiet times of year, but that should be changing somewhat in the coming month as we cool off, start seeing more rainfall, and lose the rest of the leaves off the trees. Our potential flooding really does ramp up as we approach January. We will just have to see. And flood climatology for Florida shows it is getting quiet down there during this time of year, and especially as we look to a likely La Nina in the equatorial Pacific. However, Seems we when we do get flooding down there, moderate flooding can occur. During some of our Nino years, we have seen some pretty significant flooding in central and northern Florida. We can talk about that in a little when we look at the CPC seasonal forecast. But first, let's hear from Chris about our weather for the next couple of weeks. We're beginning the period with high pressure across the area and an area of low pressure far to our west. This low and the associated cold front will move eastward this weekend, and by Sunday we're expecting the front to be through all but the Florida Peninsula. This means we will begin the midterm period next week back under high pressure. Another front is expected to approach the southeast by midweek. The forecast models aren't in as good agreement with this system at this time compared to the system over the weekend. We're looking uh, out about a week now, and forecast uncertainty is pretty high out this far. So we should start to see better agreement in the models in the next few days. Here's the current seven-day precipitation forecast with contributions from both the weekend system and the one expected later in the week. We would expect these amounts to change as we get a better idea of what that midweek system will do.
we're expecting below normal precipitation amounts in the long term period as much of this area will be behind the cold front and back into high pressure. Well thanks for that Chris. Um, you know what, there is not a new model outlook for the ENSO conditions, so we will peek again at last month's forecast from what, and from what we can tell, it is still looking like an accurate forecast. Um, we wanted to show this simply because La Nina looks like it's going to play such a big role in our, our winter weather, and so I want to continue to, to, to show that and, and show where we are with respect to that, because the pattern we would expect from La Nina is a warm and dry one. And um, just as we typically get from the southeast, that isn't always the case, um, as we'll show here. Now, we showed these last month. And what I did show last month was um, we had years where we have seen above normal rainfalls in, the, in parts of the southeast. And, and I, sh I showed that. Um, however, the 2008, 2009 um, winter, the 2011 and 12, and the 2012 and 13 years were all La Nina years. Um, we have one that was moderate and, and one and a couple that were weak. And, um, and what we saw in those years was dryness. So that's our most recent history of, of the La Nina years and kind of what sticks in our minds. And so that's kind of how we're looking at this year is the potential for dryness um, during the winter season. But as I showed before, with the wetness in some of the years, that is not always the case. So again, we'll be watching that very closely. Um, we're still a little early uh, for the La Nina effects, um, although because we see a little wetness next week and then dryness the following week. We're just not quite there yet um, for our winter type forecast. So we'll, we will have to see as we go forward. Our December outlook from the Climate Prediction Center La Nina only nudges the southeast towards dryness. Uh, when we look at the month of December in North Florida and states just north of that, we see a 50% chance of being drier than normal. That still leaves a 33% chance of normal precipitation and a 17% chance of above normal. While that is not an optimistic forecast for rainfall in some places, it still leaves a 50% chance of near, normal, near to above normal precipitation for that area in northern Florida. Um, and then as we get further away from that 50% chance, um, the chances are, are a little bit less as we get around that. It's not that we're expecting no rainfall, just our chances for below normal rainfall are higher and our chances for above rainfall normal rainfall are lower. The same can be said for the seasonal forecast from December through February. A very, again, very similar. And for some, like those in Central and South Florida, this should be a welcome forecast, at least for a little while, as they have, um, have had a very wet year so far. For those in the Piedmont areas of Georgia through Virginia, they may not be so happy about it. And the March through May forecast isn't as pronounced in its expectation for dryness. But by then, we are moving out of our recharge season, and it becomes harder to fill reservoirs and recharge soils that are, again, competing for water with the foliage and temperatures across the southeast. So really, we need to see those improvements in that um, really December through March time frame because once we get out of that time frame, it becomes much more difficult to fill the reservoirs and recharge those soils. And so the bottom line in the short term, a little wetness to begin the period and, and then some dryness in the second week. Um, normal to slightly below normal for this time of year. In the long term, we're still leaning towards dryness, dryness over most of the southeast, becoming somewhat more confident in that forecast that we're going to be um, a little bit drier for the winter season. Our next Water Resources Outlook is scheduled to be recorded on December 14, 2017. Everyone have a great Thanksgiving, and we'll talk to you then.